A nation like Israel is built out of a steel strong will, diamond as execution of spy operations. Operation Diamond was a spy agency Mossad's top nose risky operation. Its goal was to steal the newly launched Russian fighter MiG 21, the most advanced Soviet fighter plane at that time. The most secret spy operation began in mid 1963 and ended on August 16, 1966, when an Iraqi Air Force MiG-21, flown by the Iraqi Assyrian defector Munir Ratfa, landed at an air base in Israel. Israel and the United States were able to study the design of the plane. The mighty MiG-21's production began in 1959, and Egypt, Syria and Iraq received numerous planes, and the plane was posing a national security risk to Israel and America. The first two attempts to acquire the aircraft failed. The first attempt was to acquire the aircraft was conducted in Egypt by Mossad agent Jean Thomas. Thomas and his group was ordered to find a pilot who for one million would agree to fly the plane to Israel. However, their first attempt was unsuccessful. The Egyptian pilot they contacted, Adib Hanna, informed the authorities about Thomas' interest in the MiG. Thomas, his father and three other people were arrested and charged with espionage. Thomas and two others were hanged in December 1962. The other three members of the group received long prison terms. The second attempt also failed. Mossad agents ended up assaulting two Iraqi pilots who refused to cooperate with them in order to keep them quiet for some time. In 1964, an Iraqi-born Jew, Yusuf, contacted Israeli service in Tehran at a time when Israel and Iran still had diplomatic relations and Western Europe. Since he was 10 years old, Yusuf had worked as a servant for Maronite Christian family. His girlfriend's friend was married to an Iraqi pilot named Munir Ratfa. He was also upset that he had been ordered to attack Iraqi Kurds. Yusuf understood that Ratfa was ready to leave Iraq. They contacted a top agent in Baghdad, an American woman, and either on Israeli orders or on her own initiatives. She decided to draw out Munir Ratfa, a Christian Iraqi Air Force pilot and a member of Joseph's adopted family. The American woman was a Mossad agent who was not only lively and intelligent, but beautiful as well. She mixed in easily in high social circles where she went. According to one source, she initiated the contact with Munir Ratfa at a party, where the two immediately hit it off. He told her he was a patriotic Iraqi, but he found himself in violent disagreement with the current war being waged by his government against the minority Kurdish tribesmen in northern Iraq. In the 1960s, as in the 1990s, the Kurds tried to maintain their independence in the Arab and Turkish world that they did not wish to give it to them. As a minority Christian, Muni Ratfa was greatly troubled by the fact that he, as a deputy commander of a MiG-21 squadron, was one of those who was asked to lead bombing missions against the almost defenseless Kurds. Ratfa even confessed his sneaking admiration for the Israelis, who were so few against so many Muslims. There were other things bothering him as well. He had been passed over as a commander of his squadron. He was stationed far from his home in Baghdad and was allowed to fly only with small fuel tanks because he was a Christian. The American woman listened. She continued to see him and their intimacy despite his marriage and several children grew. She exploited the connection to suggest a holiday in Europe in July 1966. He agreed. After a few days there, she suggested that Muni fly to Israel with her. She had friends there who might be of service to him. She pulled out a brand new passport and tickets. He then knew that this had to have been planned from the start and she had not been attracted to him for who he was. But he also knew that she was making an offer that could be of great benefit to him. Not only would he be through with the bombing missions he so disagreed with, the Israelis would be paying him one million dollars. It was as attractive as it was dangerous. Munir wanted to see that not only his wife and children would be taken safely out of Iraq, but his parents and rest of his extended family as well. Joseph was concerned that each family member knew that they were going to leave. It was inevitable, due to human nature, that someone would mention the fact to the wrong person, and the whole plan would go awry. Therefore, many of the family members were never even told they were going to leave Iraq. As for Munir Redfa himself, not only did the Israeli agree to pay him very well and grant full protection to his family, but they would told him that they would provide him with Israeli citizenship, a home and a job for life. Muni Redfa's mind was made up. Mordecai Hod, the commander of the Israeli Air Force, met him and went over the escape plan with him. He would fly a zigzag route to Israel to avoid Iraqi and Zordanian radar. IAF commander Hod told him, 
you may know how dangerous this is going to be. The flight is 900 kilometers. If your own colleagues guess what they are up to, or they may send planes to blow you out of the skies. If they don't succeed, the Jordanians may try. Your only hope is to remain calm and follow this route. They do not know it. We do. Hot continued. If you lose your nerve, you are a dead man. Once you have left your ordinary flight path, there is no turning back. Redfer seemed aware of this and responded simply, I will bring you the plane. For the reminder of his stay in Israel, Muni Redfa and Israeli handlers went over his planned escape again and again. He was amazed to see that they knew almost as much about the goings-on at his airbase as he did. They knew the names of the personnel, both Russian and Iraqi, and the layout of the entire base. They knew minutely the routine of the training flights, long flights on certain days, short on others. He would have to pick a day when he would be permitted to go on a long-range flight. Redfa and the American woman bent back to Europe and from there to Iraq. Soon, members of Redfa's family began leaving the country, one as a tourist, another for medical treatment. Muni Redfa set his date for August 16, 1966. The Israeli Air Force would be expecting him on one of the number of given days in August. He carried on his business as usual as best he could with co-workers he would never see again. He asked the ground crew to fill his tanks to capacity, something the Russian advisors generally had to sign for. But the Iraqis disliked the Russian advisors, who seemed to hold them in contempt. This worked to Redfa's benefit. As a star pilot, they were too happy to obey his orders rather than those of the Russians. He took off. After heading out towards Baghdad, he veered off in the direction of Israel. The ground crew radar picked up a blip on the screen, heading west, and they frantically radioed him to turn around. He didn't. They warned him that they would shoot him down. He turned the radio off. When Redfa was flying over northern Jordan, his plane was struck by radar. The Jordanians contacted Syria, but they reassured that the plane belonged to the Syrian Air Force and was on a training mission. When Redfa's plane reached Israel, he was met by two Israeli Air Force Daso Mirajils, which escorted him to a landing site at Hajjar. Later, at a press conference, Redfa said that he had landed the plane on the last drop of fuel. Soon after his defection, Redfa's MiG was renumbered 007, reflecting the manner in which it had arrived. Within a few weeks, the aircraft took off again with the Israeli test pilot Danny Sapera at the controls on the first of many test flights. The jet's strength and weaknesses were analyzed and the MiG was flown against IAF fighters, eventually training Israeli pilots to deal with the aircraft. In May 1967, director of the CIA, Richard Helms, said that Israel had proven that it had made good use of the aircraft. When on April 7, 1967, during aerial battles over the Golan Heights, the Israeli Air Force brought down six Syrian MiG-21s without losing any of its Daso Mirajils. In January 1968, Israeli loaned the MiG-21 to the United States, which evaluated the jet under the Have Donut program. The transfer helped pave the way for the Israeli acquisition of the F-4 Phantom, which the Americans had been reluctant to sell to Israel. Hope you like the story. Thanks for watching. Jai Hind, Bande Matram.